Hey, uh, I'm Jim Ward. This is Rick Froberg. Uh, let's get a drink. First off, we're at Vinyl Junkies in San Diego. You're uh, adopted hometown, right? You've been here off and on? I'm from here. From here, yeah, okay. I'd say from here. And lived in New York for a while? Long time, yeah. Yeah. This is, first off, this is a huge, we've been hanging out for a couple hours before we did this part, but huge treat for me to hang out with you. Yeah, I mean, I first off, for me as well. you drew the cover for our new record, uh -huh. which I was shocked that that was even a possibility, and I was over the moon because um, I would say, and I told you this earlier, mm -hmm. Drive Like Jehu touched my life incredibly at 15, 16, as a kid in El Paso just going to punk shows, mm -hmm. really opened my eyes to a different way of playing guitar and singing and writing songs, and will probably be eternally grateful for that. So first off, thank you. Second off, thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> kind of my favorite thing to do in these is to talk about origin stories. Okay. Um, it's not ever about sort of what's going on currently. It's kind of more about the whole journey. Okay. And I like for that to be an inspiration point for, for people that are watching. So my first question is, how did you start playing guitar? I think I messed around. I always wanted to play guitar, but it, it was it's, it's confusing and weird and I didn't understand. Uh, I think I heard, I think when I heard Sonic Youth and stuff like that, I, I, I that it just sounded like anyone could do that. And um, I, so what year in your life would that be like? That 12, be... 13, something? No, after that, um, it'd be, yeah, 15, 16, I'm not sure. At one point, somebody, a friend of mine, uh, knew someone who was selling a, like a pre-CBS twin reverb and a, and a Jaguar, a pre-CBS Jaguar. And I got it, I got both things for like, it was some insane price, like 300 bucks. You saw them? I don't. I, I, I sold them to be to get a pitch for a, a PA to be in pitch yeah. for, so I could sing, which is I, I'm still kicking myself. Um, and I just started messing around with it, and um, I didn't actually start playing guitar in a band until I was in uh, Drive Like Jehu. And uh, whoa, wait a second. So you didn't play guitar before Drive Like? So Drive Like yeah, I messed was, around with it, but I did. But, but I that was your first band. guitar band, right? That's the first time I, I was in a, in a band with a guitar. As a fan, that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. I have news for the world. I'm not a good guitar player, and never have been. Me either. <laughs> okay, it's just, Me either. I don't think. I, I don't, think, that, I don't yeah. think of guitars like they're just a material. Like it's yeah. it's it's like. A, no, I'm with you. Yeah, it's just a means to an end. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Totally. I've never cared about shredding, just getting whatever's in my it's head out. It's a lot out. of work, and I don't. It's, it's just like a lot of work for what result? I mean, it's like how good are you going to actually get at this? I mean, it's just. I just like. Making and a lot of music I like is, is made by like you know 15 year olds from 1977 or whatever. It's yeah. just it's total crap, and I like that. I guess I just like lousy music, so it's like I never felt the need to uh, get too good at it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's I I got that I got that guitar and I started making noise with it, and it was a twin reverb. So I would I had it upstairs in my bedroom and I lived my parents and. And it's really hard to turn that twin reverb down very much. Yeah. To see where it even makes sound, because yeah. as, as you know, that's one of the loudest amps there is. And the cleanest. Loud right. and clean. Right. So right. super hard to break up. So immediately finding overdrive pedals, distortion pedals, something I think to break I, it up or No, I just I just started I just started I didn't know how to tune it. I just started making like uh, just scronky noises with it and I enjoyed that. And um, So it's safe to say no training, no musical training. None. Didn't play in high school band. Nope. Nothing like that. No musical background. I didn't come from a musical family. Um, well, my grandparents were kind of musical, but but uh, uh, but no, I, I didn't have any uh, encouragement in that area at all. Yeah. Um, so it was and just it was just purely a matter of wanting. To, it just I loved rock and roll music, and I wanted to wanted to be involved in some way. What were the bands you were listening to that made you want to pick up a guitar? Maybe Sonic where, Youth. I know you said that before. Well, that was cool because because it, it, it was it was it was completely divorced from all kind you know orthodox playing. Like you didn't seem like it was chords or anything. I knew that they had weird tunings. I knew that it it made it seem like you could just do anything you wanted to do, which is all I was capable of doing anyway. So so um, that's what I did. 
And um, I, was your because I know you're also a visual artist, mm -hmm. an illustrator and visual artist. Did that begin before? Well, that's all I've always done that. Just ever, I mean, ever since I could hold a pencil, I've been drawing or whatever. Uh, so uh, to me, it just seemed like one big art project. But but music is such a oh wow, Nicaragua. So when all, I say let's get a all drink, all their machinery yes. went down over there. So, oh, so no ATM, no random ball. Oh wow. Here. Oh well, thank you. Salud. Well, cheers. And thank you. Thank you to all you guys. There's like a piece of paper and he's drawing like all the classic ZZ Top like desert landscape with the little uh -huh. or whatever and I tried so hard to get it. So starting visual artists, moving into music um, from this area, first band Pitchfork you're just singing, right? The first band I was actually in was, uh, was Crash Worship. I played drums in that. And what age are you at that point? 18 probably. So you play all the instruments. Uh, so I don't know if you know. I don't know if I don't know if you know who Crash Worship is, but um, which is, you might, but it doesn't sound like you do. Um, let's just say it's like this kind of Bacchanalian uh, drum circle. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I don't know, um, uh, not, but I'm gonna know it's, it's, very soon. Yeah, it's I, it's uh, it was crazy. They would just throw the wildest parties uh, ever. But when I was in the thing, it was basically we were playing at little coffee shops and stuff like that. Instead of here. Yeah, I was from here. And then I, um, that was a little bit too modern primitive for me or whatever. So I, uh, my friends John and Don and Joey had a band called Pitchfork and mm -hmm. they, and John, this guitar player, didn't want to sing and he wanted someone to sing. And uh, I sold the Twin Reverb and the Jaguar yeah. and got the PA. So by default, I was a singer. That's how I started doing it's it. It's kind of what I love about punk rock yeah. is that you should just do it, make yeah. it happen. <laughs> yeah, if you show up, you're allowed in. Yeah. You know, if you, you don't have to be a shredder. Now there's other people who wanted to do it, but they wouldn't They wouldn't go the distance and buy the PA. And right, which is important. Do you do you get in the van? Do you go to play those shows or or do you not? And I think that's the difference between yeah. who gets to do Start this and who doesn't. Yeah, square one and drunk yeah. the business and do it. I'm kind of, I, as a, especially a Jehu fan, uh -huh. and then Hot Snakes from there, and, and I have a very tight group of friends that are going to be incredibly jealous that I'm talking to you about this stuff, and I will rub it in their face hard. Weird. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe weird for you, not weird for me. But I, I do, as, as a songwriter, I'm very curious about, not that Jehu has a formula, but Jehu has an anti-formula, right? Like, you write, or you guys wrote these songs with incredibly long intros or mm -hmm. incredibly long breakdowns. Mm -hmm. um, and they translated so well, at least to fans. We worked hard on those. We tried, we, um, the band, Drive by who was like kind of a mixture of, it was me and John from Pitchfork, and uh, Mike and Mark from this band Night Soul Man, who were, well, legendary locally, and they were, and that was the rhythm section, we always, and we, always wanted their rhythm section because they just had this brooding, uh, dark thing. That, like, it was, I, it's hard to describe, it was, but it was, it was really, really powerful. The band, that band was really great. They have records, but they're not gonna, it doesn't do it justice. So it was a combination of those two things and we, um, and we just, we liked just tweaking on things and arranging things and, and, um, and we had the skill set we had I mean, I wasn't a very good guitar player. Mark was a very good drummer. Mike's a good bass player. He just hold, hold hell everything down. He was the person who didn't do anything weird. And John was always, has always been a really talented person. Yeah. Uh, whatever he does. So, yeah. It, it, and we just, it just ended up being that. I don't know how. I mean, they're inspirations for sure. Um, it was shocking me today to realize that you, Drive Like Jay was a two LP band, right? Yeah, and, and, and one single. And how long was it been in existence, like touring? How long did you tour? We did, I mean, what was it, we 19, we started 19, sort of woodshedding like 1990, we broke up in 94, so, so whatever was in, yeah. so it wasn't around. Right so I think for at least my generation, so I graduated high school in 94, so that, mm -hmm. those were my formative years of listening to punk rock and, and right. indie rock or whatever, so that band was so important to me. But it seemed like a band that had been around forever and made a thousand records and toured the world and like, 
It's crazy. The people have been in bands and had an exper had experience yeah. in separate bands, yeah. but you know, not a lot, but a little bit. And um, yeah, we 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 yeah, we were a pretty short lived thing. It wasn't wasn't around for that long. So great. And then post right to Hot Snakes. Hot Snakes happened after I moved to New York in 1998. So I think we played our first show in either I don't know, 99, 2000, something like that. And that was basically like. John had gotten together with uh, Jason Corcunas, our drummer, and he, uh, they had just messed around and made this project. Um, and John played it for me when, they were, when Rocket was out there, and I thought, I thought oh, this is amazing. He said, well, you want to sing on it? I was like, sure. And bass player in Hot Snakes was? Is Gar Wood. Gar. But there's Who no played? bass on that first record. It's just all keyboard. And he came from Tanner. He was in Tanner and Fish I saw, I, saw, I saw Tanner in El Paso at a tiny club when I was... Very okay. young. Cool. And yeah. loved that band. And then got to see you guys at, at Fun 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 Fest when you played. Hot Snakes? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, when the kid came out. and Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it's good. Um, it's really good. Uh, that's the thing I remember most about that. And that uh, I got to meet Captain Sensible, which was really cool. <laughs> um, and Hot Snakes uh, stopped playing around 2004 or 5, I can't remember. And then we started up again. Um, so, yeah, it's just been. And there's been bands in between with yeah. obits and other things. John's done a million things, and everyone's everyone's just you know kind of just keeps on doing it for some reason. Just keep coming back to it. So I'm a huge fan of blue collar bands, bands that play music because they love playing music, and there's not sort of an end Is that goal. Blue collar. <laughs> I think of it that way. Like I think of my career as a blue collar musician, where I, I go and play shows and and I make enough to pay for that tour and maybe whatever. Right. But you don't I also have any work external other support really, other than just you have to. No. Do yeah. And I've been on, I mean, I've been on major labels and I've gotten big advances and all that shit lasts for a minute and then it doesn't really matter. Right. I kind of always say like the periods in my life where the most success happened commercially have been the worst personally for me. Like I'm just not built for Yeah, that. I've never experienced that part. So it, I have no idea. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it doesn't always mean you're selling a lot of records, but I've had these opportunities to be on major labels and have sort of that, that group around, and we were talking about Kurt Cobain earlier, like mm -hmm. have sort of the, the, that stuff happening and it doesn't, has never equated to me with happiness or success. Um, I feel much more comfortable and happy in this world where you're at a record store and you're looking through yeah. used vinyl and it is like, more I love that shit. It is more comfortable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were, Jay was on a major label for one record. Interscope. Right? Interscope. Yeah. And, um, Which was always a cool, Major to be on. It was cool to me as a kid. It seemed, well, they, it seemed we, cool because we went around to bands. all the record labels in Los Angeles and in New York, and they were, to their credit, were the only only label that would let us do whatever we wanted to do. I mean, if you listen to that record, it's not very commercial. Yeah, it's not. And I remember asking the the guy who's I think I believe it's Ted Fields who who owned it. You know, I, yeah, I asked him like, why would you sign us? And he said, "Oh, we think it's credible. We want, we want, uh, we want something that has that, that gives us our artistic credibility or whatever." So we're like, "Great." Then here's our record with uh, a cover I did in five minutes and lots of ten minute long so, songs. So I was going to ask yeah. you how many do you know people with that tattooed on them? Yeah, my best friend has one. He's that's the only tattoo he has. Yeah, I'm about to have one. I'll be honest with you because I love it. Ah, I love. I don't thing. have any tattoos. That's a weird tattoo because it's it's so it's not very. It wasn't designed to be a tattoo. But uh, it doesn't need it. to be designed to be a tattoo. It's just, you know, like yesterday we were at a we were at a restaurant and, and the woman that was waiting on us had a the the black sheep from Out of Step, yeah, from the Minor Threat that's record. A, that's, a, that's a cool tattoo. And I just thought it was. She came by and I was like, oh, I love your tattoo, and, and it was immediately like, oh, you're part of my circle. Yeah, you know? that's it. That's, I think that's, that's one of the things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've done, I've done, I've drawn tattoos for people before, but. I always, I always start. I just look at other tattoos, and I figure that this is how you got to do it, kind of, or else it's. But I think I don't know. tattoos are like records. Like everybody's gonna make a connection to something that is there. But you can get rid of a record. I mean, I have a really terrible tattoos, so I Most get. Most people I know. Yeah, I have, I have really awful ones that I got as a kid. But, eh. but just saying, I think that people will find. I think that the meaning behind it. And that's what I mean by like a record. The meaning or the relationship to that sound or that image is much bigger than the sound or the image. So when you meet people that are like, you know, for me, your records are incredibly important to my life. Mm. Um, 
And that image to me ties in with being 16 and not fitting in with the people I went to high school with or whatever, mm -hmm. but finding something that I found so immersively, I don't think that's a word, immersively, but something that just felt right and comfortable mm -hmm. and I connected with. Um, and then I think it doesn't matter if, if anyone likes it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if anybody likes a record I like. That's not important to me. No. no why would you care? Yeah. You wouldn't. You, they're not going to be around when you listen to it. <laughs> they're not. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel the same way about a lot of other thing, things like that. I mean, it's just something that, that the music, that's why music is, that's why we keep coming back, because it's so inspiring. And, and uh, making music is inspiring. I don't think listening back to my own music is inspiring, but, or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just such a great thing. It's, it's, uh, it's just like, there's nothing that makes you feel like that. Yeah, I 100% agree. What's, what's your ideal future? My ideal future? Yeah, like where do I, cause I love asking this question when I talk to people, is where do you want to go from here? I don't know, live, live in Mallorca and by the beach or something like that and okay. drink gin and tonics and. Ooh, I like that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, I just want a nice life like everyone else. Yeah. As far as music and stuff like that goes, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's, I, I've never had any goals for, for that. You just kind of get in, I mean, I think, uh, which is probably a, a flaw, but you just. I don't think it's a flaw at all. No, I'm just, yeah. just I would, do it. I would be on the other side of that. I would think not having goals is way better and just, and I don't mean goals. Well, you'll be like you'll, going, you're going to end up being disappointed if you have goals, obviously. But it also it also helps you get someplace in life. I get that. I've had this conversation a lot of times. But it, I uh, just I just feel like you just kind of do what's in the moment, and and uh, and uh, the future kind of ends up taking care of itself somehow. <laughs> Which is probably the best. Still here. <laughs> and kind of one of my last questions is is sort of more of a utilitarian musician question, which is mm -hmm. I'm a screamer. You're a screamer uh -huh. as well. I do think a lot about, like, I'm going to go play a show in a few hours mm -hmm. and I'm going to scream and it's, <laughs> it's going to hurt to some degree because I'm 46. Uh -huh. and it's changing. My voice is changing. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so I like to ask other people that's, and I, I actually sing and scream very high. Um, uh -huh. So I do want, I'm like, I'm curious when you go to write songs now, is that something you think about or it just is what it is? And Honestly, you I'd rather not or? scream. The reason I started screaming is because I couldn't hear myself. I think all of all I think all of us started that way. I sure. And so when the, the first time I really heard it was when we recorded it, and I was like, "Oh God, that sounds oh, terrible." You're insane. And it's like, uh, I'm sorry, that's an. I don't. No, mean, no, no, I, I don't just, mean you're insane. I mean to me that was so. It was just I couldn't. So I couldn't. I couldn't hear what it sounded like, and I oh, didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't really. Yeah. But that was just the deal. Yeah. And um. And I still can't. So it's 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 like if if we if hot next practices or something like that, I can barely hear it. It's, it's just it's just loud. Yeah. And it starts with the drummer and it works its way up and it's like and I and I and I can't sing. <laughs> so that's what I, that's what yeah. that's what it is. Well, that's, I feel like I'm sort of cut from that cloth as well. Yeah, so, you just work with what we have. Yeah, for sure. If you can do that, and that's what you got. Oh man. <laughs> What an absolute fucking pleasure oh, to man. hang out with you today and to get Mutual to do this. Way. And thanks to everybody, that ta the whole Taylor crew that has helped facilitate thanks, us Taylor today. Crew. And Final Junkies. And uh, man, honestly. Ah, oh, man. Thank you. Intense pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Look forward to it. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Good night. Take care. Or whatever.